Hi, Aaron. First of all, I hope you're well. I am. Hello. Are you well? I am. Thank you very much. Um, can I also check how Fabinho, Virgil and Curtis are? Is it now confirmed that they are positive and will have to continue to isolate? And is anyone else impacted or, or indeed tested positive? No, it's not confirmed yet. Um, we will... But that's still that's an ongoing process. Uh, let me say it like this. But they are not here. Um, they are fine. Apart from that, um, in this moment, nobody else positive. But it's pretty early still, and the players come a bit later. So we will see. Just with other games being postponed this weekend, how do you feel then about your own game going ahead? And further to that, do you have any concerns? of the integrity of the competition being impacted with some games on and some games off because Eddie Howe suggested that it could impact negatively. I don't know. So we have now in a moment <laughs> games to play and Thursday, Sunday is a tough, is a tough um, yeah, rhythm. Um, we have no information about Tottenham. I don't know anything about, I have no idea um, if, if they have Train since today, since from tomorrow or, or, or since a week, I have really no idea. Um, it's difficult to get any kind of information, which is part of a preparation for a game. Um, integrity of the game, I don't know when, when these games all will will, will be played. Um, where's the where's the space for them to be played? I I don't know all these kind of things. Um, I think oh, I, I'm not. We didn't. We don't think we shouldn't play on Sunday. Honestly, if we have, but I say that now, if if we now in a, in 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 two hours when the players arriving here and we have then six, seven, eight more cases, whatever, um, then of course we we cannot play. But in a situation like we are now, we can play and we would like to play. That's how it is. But um, yeah, that's it pretty much. And um, you kind of hinted at it there, but how, how do you prepare for this purely from a? A footballing point of view, because by the time you get to play Spurs, they won't have played for two weeks. So I'd imagine that it might be a little difficult to know exactly what to expect from them. Or no idea what to expect from them. I have no idea in this moment what we can expect. Then after this press conference, we have the analyze meeting. They will use old <laughs> um, 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 pictures, obviously. So. I mean, we still don't know what we have, what we can make of that. If we maybe we'll have a little idea about the system, stuff like this, but that's it, uh, pretty much. Because again, we have absolutely no information. That, but it's not about now our preparation for the Tottenham game. That's difficult, but for them it's difficult as well. I know that. Who wants not to play for two weeks and then all of a sudden you have to play again? That's all not not easy. I just think with all the things we are discussing and we don't know, and as, is there the solution? I don't see it in the moment, but more transparent. Transparency, I think, would really be helpful. So we know now, in this moment, three players are probably not available, and if they will be available, we will we will say it. So that's that's the moment. And then if they are if they are false positive, and we, we we realize that, then we will say that, and everybody knows they are now available. But so in a moment, nobody knows at all. I have no idea. At Manchester United, I heard a number of players, but I have no idea. Who are the players? I have no idea who had the virus at, at Tottenham. I don't know if that's necessary. If it's necessary to know who, is it necessary how to, to know how many? But knowing nothing in a, in a, in a really public world is, is quite strange. Thank you, Vinny. We go to Max from Premier League Productions, and then after Max, we go to Juliet for one. Max. Hello, Jürgen. Hope you're doing well. Um, everybody is rightly talking about Trent's goal last night, but I just wondered what's pleased you most about his play this season. Oh. You should send this out this question probably before the press conference and I can think about it longer. Um, probably the overall the, the overall performance because it's just the next step in his in his in his whole development. Um, we adapt our game to his skills. He adapt he he puts in his skills in in our in our different plans. He obviously plays different positions. Is different positioned on the pitch meanwhile than it was in the beginning because he's just a much, a more, a much more mature player, he's a, a more confident player, he's um, much more settled uh, in, in, in all different um, parts of the game and so it's for, for us, um, of course he's still in the right back position to defend especially, then we have, he's a right winger, then he's a uh, plays is, is an eight, is an six, in, is a playmaker, it's a lot of different things for us. So. Um, and he enjoys it. 
and he enjoys himself on a pitch. You can see that. But it's tough. He's still young, and it's an intense period. And he, and he didn't play. Now, it was not his best game last night. It was one of his best goals, yes. But it was not his best game. But that's completely normal. And you have then, even through your be not best games, you have to get through with a solid performance. And he had two outstanding moments. It was the goal, and it was the, obviously the tackle. Um, um, when he won the ball against Fraser, so um, that were two go game-defining moments. <laughs> and yeah, even on night when not when not everything is clicking, you can be um, the decisive man, and that what he was last night. Thank you. And another positive showing from Alex Oxford Chamberlain as well yesterday. How would you describe his impact over the last few weeks? A oh, just good. Oxley is pretty much the best Oxley since I'm here. I know he was more spectacular in moments and scored wonderful goals against. City and stuff like this, really good goals um, for us uh, last year. Burnley, all these kind of things, but um, it's it's really it's it's a new, a completely new quality. So it's like re like calming the game down, being not only the sprinter with the ball um, or the shooter stuff like this, but really being involved in all the in all the different things we do on the pitch is just a, it's a massive step. I'm I'm really happy with Ox in a, in a moment, and um, um, yeah, hopefully it stays like this. Thank you. We go to Juliet for one from the BBC and then after Juliet, in from TalkSport for one. Um, Jürgen, just going back to what you were saying to Vinny, a lot of people have admired your transparency in this situation because of all the uncertainty around. Um, why do you think others aren't as transparent as you? Or is that just the way that, that you like to be in, in your own life? I think you'd have to ask them that, Juliet. I'm not I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly how... how so, I think it's it's just that you, you just seem to be so transparent in, in this whole situation, you know, with the no, we have to, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I don't see it like that, I just think we don't have anything to hide, so it's just where you have to, we have a, so we all, of our first and, and most important concern is that the boys are healthy, so like all of us, obviously, but now in this environment here, the boys uh, and the staff and all these kind of things, I mean, that's not the case, so if somebody has a flu, so and you ask me in the press conference, and I say he has a flu. If somebody has a, a, a broken toe, if I know it, I say he has a broken toe. So that, that's how it is, and that's how it is now with, with these things. I don't know. It's, I know it's, it's difficult because one is a pandemic and the other one is, is, is an individual injury, but still, anyway, we have, to, we have to find a way to get through all this. And I really think that the exchange of information is because it's uh, is, is, is pretty helpful uh, because I think that all the misleading, uh, the, the wrong information, they mislead a lot of people. So that's just a problem. So just say how it is and then carry on from there. So it's now, for example, being being. I know that uh, all the anti-vaxxers out there will say, oh, well, the club said he, they were vaccinated, but now they got the virus. Yes. And? That's exactly what everybody told before. It doesn't. It doesn't um, deny you getting or saves you from not getting it. You can get it, but you get through it properly in a, in, a, in the right way. So that's how it is. That's what the vaccination is for. And yes, it makes it rather more unlikely to get it. But unfortunately, the boys had the booster too late for the infection. Now, so if it, if they are infected, so that's the situation. I think really we should talk about it because there's so many things um, out there in this case where which I don't, just don't understand. Um, and it's not. It's not. How can you blame somebody who get the virus, and, and if, especially when he was get vaccinated? There's no chance for. You can get it. So get through it and start from there. Okay, Ian, talk sport. Thanks, Julia. Ian. Hi, Jürgen. How are you? Still, still okay. Yeah, still okay. Still yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you other managers yesterday were calling for a bit of a break in the Premier League, which I understand you. Um, I'm not in favour of. But what about players? If we're going to keep the Premier League going, but clubs playing younger players. If, if senior pros are out, I mean, if you and I went to the opera tomorrow night, we'd see an understudy. If, if the main cast were available. So, I'm not against stopping the league. I, I just don't see the 100 percent benefit of it. So, and about that, between stopping the league and carrying on, there are different levels which we can talk about so stopping the league means we stop now for one week for two weeks means uh, five six games two weeks probably so when you want to play them I think always when you when you think about something and maybe in, in one a specific point is on our hands anymore and somebody else will stop the league then, then, it, then 
it be like this. But as long as we can decide it or whatever, when do we want to play the games? That's one thing. So the other thing is now we, we just play on. Well, really difficult, pretty much impossible. So because we have not now only uh, not, not only um, smaller squads, because step by step players will get infected. That's how it looks in a moment. Hopefully we, we can break the chain somehow and all these kind of things. But it's not unlikely that it will happen. So and then we have games on Sunday. We have then a game on Wednesday in a, in a competition, FA Cup, where if I'm 100% right, tell me if I'm wrong, the opponent is not. Uh, there's no real testing regime or and the vaccination rate is really low but we don't know anything about it we don't get any kind of information because it's just football and we have to play against them three days later we play another football game and then we have the, the, the incredible thing all of us pretty much 26, 28 so with reduced squads smaller squads you cannot play that schedule so that's another thing so can you can you can you play on yes can you use youth player academy players yes can you play then every three days no so that's the thing. So even when you stay healthy, it's already tough. But when you are not complete, then it's really tough. Uh, or not, then it's impossible. And that's that's the thing. So there are obviously some things we have to talk about. And maybe we see it as a chance because the schedule was always um, really, really, really tough. Was on the edge, if not over. Um, and now we see, okay, it's really too many football games. Um, that there's no space for any kind of rescheduling or whatever. And then we realize that we can do better. Thanks, Ian. Uh, we'll go to one from Carl Woodward and then to Carl Markham from Press Association. Then we'll go to the first breakout. I can probably only take three hands in the first breakout if people want to have a consideration of that now. Uh, but Carl from the BBC for one. Hey, Jürgen. Hi, Carl. Um, just going back to Trent. He said after the game yesterday that he'd waited five years to strike the ball. as clear as that. Um, we know how good his delivery is. We know how good he can strike the ball. Is that part of his game he wants to improve on scoring goals, do you think? Yes, but it's a part of the game and part of things he wants to improve. But I don't think it, he gets up in the morning and thinks, how can I score the next goal? So um, he, is, um, he has to improve his game and there's enough space and, and enough time for him to improve his game. He has, he has so many parts, um, reading situations better, um, dealing with situations better. So many parts of the game he can improve and he's already a world-class player. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure what he... I didn't ask him, but probably uh, when he grew up and watched uh, Liverpool games, he saw Steven Gerrard quite frequently scoring goals like this. Um, and knowing you have uh, a very good um, shooting technique yourself, you want to want to score these kind of goals, of course. Now, it's not the case that he's like 20 times a game in a position in a half-left, half-space uh, where he scored a goal from yesterday. So that's pretty much the only space where he's not very often. Um, but scoring from there um, is obviously something he might have to wait another five years for it uh, because um, it's just not his position but doing it is pretty special I can imagine hitting a ball like this seeing it flying and then hearing the, the, the sound when it goes in the back of the net is, is absolutely special um, it's something each footballer loves and he um, yeah, deserves to go like this as well because he's just an, an incredible player Okay, thank you. Final question is Carl Mark, and I've got the three hands I can take for the first breakout, so that we're good to go there after, but I uh, can't really take any more there. But Carl, to finish the open section of the press conference. Carl. Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Um, I asked you a couple weeks ago about Diogo Jota, and I'm asking you about him again. No one else has scored more goals in the Premier League apart from Mo than him. Um, but I wonder if his, his contribution is, is maybe being a little bit less underrated because of what Mo is doing. Mo's outstripping everybody. But his his current run of you know, what's he got? He's got uh, five in his last six. That's 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 been an important run for you in, in maintaining the momentum of, of eight wins in a row. And you should have scored in the last game as well, eh? So. Um... Yet Joe is an incredible player. So, but for players underrated, I don't know honestly why, why uh, or under the radar. Why you always ask me that? Because they are not under my radar. So, if if, if people do that, how can I change that? Um, Joe is an exceptional player. Uh, Mo is an exceptional player. By the way, Sadio Mane plays really, really good in a moment. It's just unlucky with in the last moments. So like yesterday, it would have been a penalty. He tries to stay on his feet, and and then Mo can finish it off. It's great. But all these boys, they have incredible quality. That's why they come in these positions. That's why they come in these situations. And Yogo um, has 
developed in the last few months a proper killer instinct. That's true. So he's there in the right, he's there in the moments. He's in the right spaces. He brings himself in, in good positions. Is uh, his I think his link up play, especially on this half left with, with Sadio, is exceptional. So I really like watching it, and um, he's still young, and um, there's still really uh, a lot to come for him. And but it's already good. So good for us.